Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the next episode in the Coding a 2D Game Engine in Java series. In the last episode, what we did was we integrated IMGUI into our engine. So now we have the ability to use IMGUI, except we're still missing a few key features. So in today's episode, the first thing that I'm going to do is show you how to import your own font because that is super important and we want a good font so that you can either change it up just to your liking or you can resize it so that it's a little bit bigger if it's too small on your screen because of DPI issues and all that stuff. And the next thing that we're gonna do is actually fully integrate IMGUI so that we get a uh, good scene integration so that we can uh, override methods like we do with our update method and have each of the game objects call IMGUI when it is selected or active. So we'll take a look at how to do all of that in this episode. All right, guys, so we're actually going to jump straight into coding. I don't feel like there's much of a need for drawing anything out because most of this stuff is fairly straightforward. Now, the first thing that we are going to do, let's restart this just so that we can see where we were at because this will let us see what the first big problem is. So first big problem, for me at least, for you it may not be, is the font is way too small but it may also be a font that you just don't want. So let's take a look at how we can actually change up that font fairly easily and get it working. So I'm gonna go into IMGUI layer, uncomment all this font stuff, and then we will go through and just sort of pick and choose what we actually need. So the first line, the IM font atlas, what is the font atlas? Well, this is basically just an atlas or a sprite sheet is probably what you know it as better which contains all alphanumeric characters and punctuation marks like this and this is what i am GUI uses to do the font rendering so it creates a big sprite sheet of all the font of all the characters and then it just selects those and places them onto quads to render the font which is actually what we will be doing in the future too for like hud items and stuff but we can just use this for now. So it creates a font atlas, then we need to get a font config and let's take a look at this comment. It says it's natively allocated, so it should be explicitly destroyed. And we'll notice at the bottom here, he has font config.destroy. So we'll keep that. It's good to have that comment just so we know too. Then we have this font config.set glyph ranges. Now the glyph ranges is basically what type of characters you want. So you can see that he's adding in the Cyrillic character set. I'm going to say we'll just stick to the default range, which is US ASCII. I'm fairly certain. I'm not completely certain on that uh, because I don't need Cyrillic characters. If you did, you could change this so that you have the Cyrillic characters or I think we'll check. They have Chinese full, Chinese simplified, Japanese, Korean, Thai, Vietnamese, and you could come up with your own custom glyph range because uh, you can see that this is actually just a short array, which basically means that all it's taking in is just a array that looks like this and contains the range for the glyphs. So we're just going to do the default though. Next line he has font atlas .add default font. We don't want the default font, or at least I don't. So I'm going to take that out. And if we take that out, we're actually going to see, I'm going to comment out this line, this line, and all of these because they all add fonts using stuff we don't have. If we don't have a default font, what IMGUI is going to do is it's just going to crash. And we'll see up here that it actually says it failed with an exception, assertion failed, atlas config data dot size greater than zero. So it's saying, hey, you never gave us any data for the characters. We can't render anything because we have no fonts. So we will now set up our own font. Okay, so you see that it says set merge mode. What this does is this basically means that anytime you add a new font, it will merge it to the font atlas and just add it for characters that we may want. I'm going to take that out because you can't merge fonts if you don't have a default font or you can't merge fonts if you're only adding one font. If you had multiple fonts, you would set that to true, but I'm going to set it false. I'm going to take this out too. And I'm actually going to take all of these ones out too. They're just different ways that you could load fonts, different examples. Uh, we're just going to do the simplest one, which is using the STB true type library. So it says add font from memory TTF, which is actually not the one we want. This is a little bit different than what we want. So we'll say font atlas .add font from file TTF. Then we can just pass in the file. I'm going to say assets slash 
fonts slash sago ui.ttf, which I have included into my directory. Actually, I might not have included it in there. So if you want to add a custom font and you are on Windows, I would say go to local disk C, Windows, then you can go to fonts, find a font you want. I'm going to do sago UI, which is right here. And then I'm going to click onto it and let's see, I'm going to click just the regular, wherever that is. There we go, regular, copy it. Then you'll go up to your project directory. So mine is in C, Dev, Java Projects, and Mario. And then I'm going to go into Assets. Okay, I do have fonts, and I do have Sago UI. But if you didn't, you would just paste it here. Now you have it. So now we have this font file. Then we're going to say the size and pixels I'm going to do is 32. And the font config is the font config that we created. That should be all we need. Now if we run this one more time, we should get the window and we have a bigger font and you can see this is true I'm gonna do it to something outrageous like 64 and you'll notice this gets really big so that is too big for me though 32 is just fine now this demo window is sort of how we are going to go about figuring out how to do things so I will show you an example of if I want to do something how I figure it out and everything in just a moment first Let's set up IAM GUI so that it actually is fully integrated with our scene. So right now we're saying every update we start a frame, we do a new frame, we show the demo window, and then we render. I just realized that my mouse capture was off too, so sorry about that first half of the video. But now that that's fixed, we need to add in something inside of here that basically says now we need to do IAM GUI on our whole scene too so that we can have custom things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the game object and we're going to say public void I am GUI. And then we're going to say for component C in components C dot I am GUI. Then we're going to go to component. We are going to create a public void I am GUI. This way classes can override it if they want. And I'm actually going to change this too because our update method, we don't want to make components force them to override or to implement this themselves. They should be able to only implement it if they want it to. So this way we can do like an at override in a component and then it'll override this method. But if they don't want to implement it, they don't have to. So, and then we're doing the same thing with IAM GUI. Now we have a way to IAM GUI on our game object, but how does that actually get called? Well, let's go into our scene and we're going to create a couple functions in here. We'll say public void scene I am GUI. And then we're going to also create a public void I am GUI. This function is going to work sort of the same way as this function in the component where you can override it for specific scenes if you want. And then this one will just do the active game object. So we're going to go up to here and say protected game object active game object is null initially then we'll say if active game object is not null then active game object dot i am gui and we'll actually say i am gui dot begin inspector and then i am gui dot end what is active game object active game object is basically the game object that you are inspecting so say you're in your level editor and you click onto a game object in your level and you want to change some property that game object is now the active game object. And so what we're doing is we're creating a window by saying begin the inspector, then we call I am GUI on the game object, then we end the window so that we have that window. And then we'll just call I am GUI after we finish this. This I am GUI is something that you can use to create custom scene integrated I am GUIs and stuff. We'll see how to do all this too in just a minute. So let's go into the window now though, and we will call uh, actually, so inside of here, we say update I am GUI layer. And then what we're going to do is we're also going to pass it the current scene. And then we're going to change this guy. We're going to say take in a scene to. And then right here, right before we show the demo window, what we're going to do is we're going to say scene I am GUI. That way we end up calling it every frame and that all works properly too. Okay, let's go into level editor scene, make sure this is working. So I'm going to go down here and say at override public void I am GUI. Then I'm just going to say 
Uh, I am GUI dot begin test window. I am GUI dot text some random text. And then I am GUI dot end. We run this and we get a test window with some random text, which is really cool. Now, say you want your windows, like say I have them right here, I exit, you want it so that when you reopen, they are in the same configuration they were before. That's actually really easy to implement with IMGUI and it's something I'm gonna show you how to do real quick too because I find that I like that feature. If you go into the IMGUI layer and just go to the top, you'll notice it says io.set ini file name. This is just an initialization file, ini in it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say imgui.ini, and then we're gonna run this one more time. And I'm gonna change some things up, move this over here, move this over here, wait a couple seconds so that that saves. Exit. Then if we run one more time, you'll notice they have retained their position. What just happened there? Well, when we tell imgui a file name, it goes ahead and creates a file wherever we tell it to. Name of that file is right there. If we open this up, you can see that it just serializes all that data. And so we get the position of each window, the size, all that stuff, literally just pasted right into here. And then it just saves that data and loads it the next time we open, which is really nice. So if you want to save your window configurations, use this. If you don't, don't use it. Okay, now that we have that working, we have custom scene IM GUIs, we have a window. Let's say I want to change the color of this square through IM GUI. So we know that the sprite render is in control of the color of the square currently, right? It has this vector four of color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the sprite render and I'm gonna say at override public void IM GUI. And I'm actually going to put this up with my other overridden methods, just that they're all sort of grouped together. Then I want to do a color picker. How do I do a color picker? I don't know. Well, what I can do is I can go to my demo window and I'll go to widgets, look for color picker. Then I will look for what I want. And I really like this big color picker. I want this one. Well, let's look at some of the text around it. This says, uh, well, I mean, we can literally just look at this. It says color widget, color widget, color picker right there. So then what you do is you go up to here, say okrna I am GUI or just dear I am GUI, which is this one. Then we can go, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, into the I am GUI demo.cpp. This is C++, but it translates pretty similarly to Java. Uh, it's a little bit different, but I'll show you how to work with it. Next, I'm gonna say color picker, because I want to use the color picker. And you see that we can sort of go through this file and look for something that is similar to what we just saw. And this actually looks pretty similar to what we have here. So if we look at this, you'll notice it says color picker with alpha, with alpha bar, with side preview, all that stuff. And then if we look here, we see color picker, alpha, alpha bar, side preview. So this is clearly the code that is running that little snippet. So we can take a look at this code and see how he did it to sort of get an idea of how we should do it. So I'm gonna say, okay, we need to do this I am GUI text thing. And I'm gonna say, we also need to do this I am GUI color edit for thing. So let's go back into our code. Let's exit out of here first of all. And then inside of our sprite render, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, I am GUI dot text color picker and then we'll say I am GUI dot color picker four. And actually you can just do the label here. So I'm not even gonna do the I am GUI text. Then we'll take a look at what parameters this guy is expecting. Well, he expects a float array of colors. So we'll go up here, we'll say float I am colors equals, and then we'll say color dot X, color dot Y, color dot Z and color dot W. Then we will pass in this I am color. Then what we can do is we can say if this function, which basically means this color picker was clicked on and changed. So if this function, then we will say uh, this color, this dot color, dot set I am color, zero, I am color, one, I am color, two, and I am color, three. 
then we will say this dot is dirty is true and that should change our color now let's run this again but you'll notice uh, we don't get any window with this color. Why is that? Well, that's because we don't have an active game object right now. Remember, we have to have a game object selected to be able to see these. So what we can do is we can go into our level editor scene and we'll just sort of cheat a little bit. We'll go up here and say this dot active game object equals obj1. That way we just sort of force it to be this object. Now you'll notice we get a color picker window and if we change this, you can see that this changes too, but it looks like it's not changing correctly, right? This is black, but this is sort of a grayish. Why is that? That's because we're displaying an image. If we go into here, uh, remember we have these blend images that we were using for testing. I actually spent a lot of time wondering why the color wasn't matching up and it was just because I was doing an image instead. So what we can do is instead of saying use a texture, we will just say because we can also use a color. So we'll say use uh, red. And then we will just set the color to red. Then if we run this one more time, you'll notice it's bright red. And if we change it, it is the same exact color as this color picker right here, which is really cool. So now we have a way to just immediately get feedback and stuff. Uh, this isn't very helpful because we're not saving the data, but that would be the next logical step to save the data so that we can actually change stuff, click onto this, change it, and then get it the way we want, then control S and we save our scene. Okay, so I hope you see just how powerful a few simple functions can be. We have a way to do a custom window inside of every scene. We also have a way to do a custom property for every single component that we add which basically means that we can now dynamically create these windows at runtime based on the objects, change data, and click on new objects, change data, and it all just works, which is so awesome. I think we're running out of time again, so I'm gonna wrap up the tutorial here. So this has sort of been an introduction to IMGO. We know how to fully integrate it into our 2D game engine. The next steps I think we should take is to start serialization. And we are going to use JSON, not JSON, JSON, it's Google's version. And we'll take a look at how we can use that to easily serialize and deserialize our data. I think you guys will like it. And then we'll have level saves and everything that we can use. And we can start really using IMGUI to start editing levels, creating levels. So I'm excited for the future. We are getting some great progress done. I hope you guys like this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks. See you.